share my screen. Yeah, so without further ado, then I want to hand things over to Simon. He's going to tell us today about automatic updates for Galaxy tools and workflows. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so my plan for this talk is um, just to introduce this project that we've been working on, I guess, for a bit more than a year for um, automatically updating software requirements in Galaxy tools and workflows. Um, yeah, with, with the aim mostly of informing people who are working on developing new tools and workflows that um, this possibility exists. Um, so we've developed um, a command line tool integrated into Planemo as well as a as well as a GitHub bot, which performs these automatic updates. Um, and in order to explain exactly what this um, uh, what this auto update functionality does, I wanted to start um, at the absolute beginning. Um, and um, go through what Galaxy tools and workflows actually are. I guess that um, most people um, should have some idea about this. But um, uh, but, but most bio, but most bioinformaticians or um, computational scientists um, run their software on the command line. And what Galaxy allows you to do is to um, run it in the in the Galaxy interface. Um, so so um, you have this this tool wrapper which maps inputs and outputs between the command line and the Galaxy API, and then this is um, rendered in the in the Galaxy interface. So in the wrapper, which you see um, at the top of this slide, you have um, various things. So you have the command section, which is um, not shown here. Um, you have a list of requirements, which are um, installed using the Conda package manager, or alternatively um, using Docker or Singularity containers, which are then in turn uh, produced from um, Conda packages. And also a list of then of inputs and outputs, uh, which are defined for the tool, um, uh, and which are mapped then between the um, between the command line and the um, and the API or the graphical interface. And then um, uh, Galaxy workflows um, uh, are then created when when a user combines multiple Galaxy tools into a single um, in, into a single item. So. Um, Whereas Galaxy tools are defined by this wrapper, then um, Galaxy workflows are defined by this by this workflow file, which specifies um, all of the component tools of the workflow, as well as um, how they're connected, um, any predefined inputs or parameters. Um, and um, whereas for the Galaxy tools, the requirements um, are specified as um, as as Conda packages or as containers. Um, the uh, the requirements for a Galaxy workflow can be seen as, as the component tools which make up the workflow. So you can already think about some kind of um, of hierarchy that you have the um, the source code of some scientific software. Um, then this is compiled to create some conda package um, uh, or alternatively a container, and then you have the the Galaxy tool which is based on the conda package, and then the Galaxy workflow is the highest level of the pool. And just like a Galaxy tool, then the workflow is rendered in the user interface, um, like you can see on this slide. So um, it looks pretty similar. Um, but um, of course, for a workflow, then uh, the workflow developer might have chosen to hide a lot of the parameters um, from the user because they um, uh, because the aim of the workflow is to perform a more specialized task, and um, not all parameters maybe need then uh, then to be exposed uh, to the end user. So um, one problem which, which arises um, is that uh, all of these tools and workflows specify um, versions of their respective dependencies. So the version of the Conda package for the tools or for the workflows, um, the, the versions of the component Galaxy tools um, with the aim of ensuring the, um, ensuring the, the, um, the, uh, the reproducibility um, of, of, of the analyses. Um, but then the problem, the problem that arises, of course, is that the upstream tool developers um, might be constantly releasing um, new versions of their software. So, for, for, so for example, for, for this for this tool, HiFi, um, if you search using Conda for new um, for software versions, you have um, a lot of different um, options. And then I just checked on on, on the European server two server two day, and, and the newest version is then um, two point five point three six, and a lot of versions missing. So the idea 
um, of, of this project is to try and solve this problem. Um, that when you have this updates of um, of the upstream tools, that we have some automatic way to also update the the the, the Galaxy tools and workflows which um, are based on these um, on these software tools. Um, and the big inspiration for for, for this is what Bioconda is doing. Um, so they have have a GitHub bot. Um, the Bioconda bot is the GitHub username, which is doing something very similar for the um, Conda for for the Conda packages. So for the um, next step down this kind of higher of this kind of hierarchy that I mentioned. Um, so uh, Conda packages are defined by Conda recipes, um, and um, they are effectively a list of instructions on how to compile a particular um, a particular software package. And um, so you can see an example in the screenshot for, for cut it out. But, um, just like a Galaxy tool or a Galaxy workflow, it specifies a particular, um, a particular version of the software. And it also uh, specifies a um, link um, where the source code should be downloaded from. And then it has some instructions about how um, this source code should be taken and, um, and compiled to produce um, the Conda package, which is then published and then downloaded whenever you run a, um, a Galaxy tool. And um, so this was the kind of inspiration um, for us to create a similar bot, which would do the same thing for um, Galaxy tools and Galaxy workflows. So just like this Bioconda bot is um, um, is doing that, that every um, that um, every so often it checks these um, these 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 URLs. So for this example, on on PyPy to see if um, a new version of the package has been released, and then it creates um, a pull request um, if a new version is available to update um, the, the version to publish a new version of the Conda package um, as soon as possible. Um, so the Update functionality um, is implemented as a subcommand to Planemo, so this Planemo auto update. And um, yeah, so um, it makes a few assumptions about about um, about the tool. Um, so one difference um, between a Galaxy tool and and a Conda recipe is that a Galaxy tool might have um, more than uh, might have more than one dependency, which um, complicates things a little bit because um, uh, for example, in this example, which is um, which is Pangolin, then probably you only want to um, create a new version of the Galaxy tool if the um, main depends if the main dependency, so Pangolin, um, uh, has been updated. So if there's a new version of Pangolin available, and if there's a new version of this CSV TK dependency, which is just used for I guess for processing um, CSV files, then um, probably that's not a good enough reason to publish a new version of the of the Galaxy tool. So um, what we assume is that um, a tool has this um, tool version token defined. So um, once in the um, version of the tool um, on, the, on the first line here, and then um, once in the, in, in the requirement section. And then we assume that this is the main requirement, the one that we care about. And um, then um, the auto update command um, checks if a newer version of this dependency exists um, or can be installed um, via Conda, and, and and if so, then it um, updates it, and then and, and, and only then it checks the um, the rest of the dependencies. So in this case, um, Scorpio and CSVTK, and then it finds that indeed there's a new version of um, Scorpio and also and, and also updates that. Um, so it updates this this token which is specified, and also updates any um, uh, um, additional dependencies. And the final step, which is it necessary in this case? Is that um, if this version suffix um, is set to a value greater than zero, then it has to be reset um, uh, for the new version. So this um, version suffix um, tracks um, changes to the to, to the Galaxy tool, which don't which are made without um, updating the um, the dependency version. So, for example, if um, there's a missing feature which needs to be integrated, um, uh, or perhaps a bug um, which needs to be fixed, then, um, then this Galaxy version suffix needs needs to be um, uh, needs to be bumped each time. And um, yes, so, so, so that's more or, or less it. I mean, there's a couple of um, 
complexities, um, which we can discuss maybe later if, um, um, if anyone's interested, like um, for example, that Galaxy tools often make use of, of macros to define um, um, to define parts of the of the tool definition, which can be which can be repeated, and um, because various tools can share um, can share macros which might contain um, these requirements, then um, that makes things a, 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 a bit more complicated. Um, but but fundamentally, that's the, um, that's the process which um, this um, auto update is doing for um, for Galaxy tools. Um, so one downside um, of this um, auto update compared to the Bioconda bot is that um, the, um, the the PRs which which created often still need need a lot of work. So um, we created this the Skitter user can name auto update which um, runs this um, auto update command group, um, peer, um, peer, uh, periodically against the RUC repository. And then it creates pull requests for all the tools which um, it thinks needs updating. And um, the big difference with Bioconda bot is that um, for a Conda recipe, it's unlikely that you want to make big changes to the, to, 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 to the recipe every time that version is updated because it's just a list of compilation instructions. This shouldn't be changing much. But for a Galaxy tool, then you might really need to change a lot of stuff between um, releases. So if a new features have been added, um, uh, if new features have been added to the to the, to, to the code, um, uh, new flags, new subcommands, then very likely you want to then incorporate those into the Galaxy tools. And then um, someone from um, uh, someone needs to go ahead and to and to take care of those. Um, uh, of those updates. So in this example, um, the auto update has found that Pangolin needs updating, um, but then, uh, but then in this case, um, uh, someone has to go ahead and um, and um, check the change log, or I mean, assuming that a change log exists, otherwise they have to check the the diff between the um, two versions, and to add any new version, to add any new features which um, uh, need to be added, or which they think, um, in their opinion, as a Galaxy tool developer um, are important for the Galaxy users. Um, and that, that raises the question, which in my opinion is not fully resolved, um, um, of who is actually responsible for, um, uh, for this update um, process. Um, so um, one idea which, um, which we had, which was also discussed a little bit, but maybe we could also discuss again is if we could somehow specify a um, tool um, yeah people who are responsible for, for, for tools so um, that they would automatically be be um, be pinged when these pull requests are created and that they have some um, not necessarily responsibility but they're assigned to um, to take care of that tool so similar to how um, Bioconda recipes um, also have tool maintainers um, who um, Kind of um, take care of a, of, of a particular tool. So once we um, created this um, uh, auto update command for tools, um, we wanted to also extend it to to um, so we can do the same thing for workflows. So um, um, so recently we, there's now this this um, this IWC repository which. Um, uh, maintains workflows on GitHub similar to how the IUC does it for, for tools. And so you can have um, a similar um, auto update um, GitHub bot, which then updates these, these, these Galaxy um, workflows. Um, and then again, it's the kind of next stage in this um, update hierarchy from the source code to Bioconda, which is taken care of by Bioconda bot, then to the Galaxy tool, and then to the Galaxy workflow. And so it builds on these workflow refactor actions, which were created by, by, by John Chilton. So mostly, I think, in, in this pull request here. Um, 
And um, some of you might know about this upgrade workflow option in the workflow editor that you can select um, in the drop-down menu, upgrade workflow, and then um, in, in the UI, and it automatically updates all of the Galaxy tools and sub workflows um, which make up that workflow. Um, uh, so so at the, uh, that automatically updates all the component tools and sub workflows um, in the workflow. Um, and so what this um, auto update sub command does when it's applied to a workflow is it does exactly the same thing but, but by the but by the Galaxy API um, instead of the user interface. So if you run then plenty of auto updates on your workflow, then it um, spins up a, um, a local Galaxy server. It loads all the um, Galaxy tools which are required onto the server. Um, it installs the, the workflow. It then runs this um, this upgrade workflow um, refactor action, and then it downloads the workflow um, and um, to your machine, and then closes the Galaxy server. What you can also do, which um, can be quite nice and um, also much quicker um, in many cases, is to run this auto update on a particular Galaxy server. So, for example, use Galaxy.org, and then what you get is um, uh, the auto update for a workflow which is um, uh, tailored to that particular instance. So you get the most recent version of the of, of, of this workflow, which is capable of being run on usegalaxy.org or usegalaxy.eu um, or whichever other um, uh, um, or whichever other server you're using. And um, yeah, that's been quite useful for me as well when I've submitted workflows to the IWC that um, this can take um, uh, uh, some time, and then it can be that um, new versions of Galaxy tools up here in the process of the workflow development, and then I can quickly um, run this auto update command and um, have um, a fresh version of the um, of the workflow, which I can push to to my IWC pull request. And then, maybe somewhat surprisingly, the review process for um, the workflows which are created. Oh, sorry, for the, for the pull requests which are created um, for workflows is actually a bit simpler than it, than it is for tools. Um, and the reason is, I guess, that most workflows have a um, very defined function, so um, you don't necessarily want to be changing um, a um, lots of different stuff in, in, in contrast to a tool where um, if the underlying software has some new features which um, uh, you want to add in order to um, provide the maximum functionality to the user for a workflow. Um, you maybe don't don't care about that because the workflow has a um, um, a very specific task which it's supposed to perform. Um, so the advantage of doing this workflow refactoring by the um, uh, API um, is that it ensures that um, tool inputs or absolute or outputs which which, which are obsolete, which got removed. Um, uh, in the um, which which got removed from the tools um, and they were updated to the most recent version um, also get um, or get removed and the bot provides um, a list of um, a list of the tools which have been um, changed or updated and um, uh, if the tests are passing on IWC then to, then to be honest it's probably um, it's probably safe it's probably safe to to merge without um, too much human intervention uh, without too much human intervention. Um, yeah, so to kind of finish off, I wanted to show this um, uh, this uh, figure from the Planeo paper, which we um, submitted uh, recently. So um, the idea is that we have a, an entire chain of um, uh, automated software version updates. So, um, as I kind of mentioned before, we start with the source with the source code on GitHub. It's by the bot that takes care of creating the new Bioconda package, then we have the auto update bot, which creates the new Galaxy tool, the new Galaxy workflow. And then in the BioContainers community, that then they're, then they're dealing with uh, creating Docker and Singularity containers. And then the um, tools and workflows um, um, also then get installed um, from the, um, get installed to um, the Galaxy toolshed to, um, to Docstore and, and from there onto um, the big servers like usegalaxy.eu or usegalaxy.org. Um, and then 
yeah, so of course, um, I end the talk with asking if there are questions. Um, but I thought maybe I can also ask um, if if that, 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 that I can ask some questions myself. So um, I guess I'm interested um, in improving this, um, if possible. Um, I wanted to see what people think about this tool, about this tool maintainers idea in particular. Um, so I mean. Um, on our computational chemistry um, tools repository that we um, have this implemented. So we just specify the maintainers in the um, in the um, in the shed file, and then um, the bot um, extracts this and then pings the um, and then pings the maintainer whenever it creates a PR. And then yeah, maybe um, um, how to prioritize PRs. So often I look through open PRs and I see that. Um, if there's a particularly particularly important tool, then I try and focus on that one. But um, and to um, check whatever features have been included, and to um, uh, and, and and to and push them to the PR. Um, but, maybe, but, maybe, but maybe we can think about doing this in a more um, structured way. So again, that maybe someone gets gets assigned to it. Um, yeah, maybe perhaps check the frequency of PRs. So currently, the the, the bot is run. Once a week for the IEC and once a month for for workflows. Um, yeah, we have a good change this potentially. Perhaps this is too is um, is um, is not frequent enough, particularly for for for, for workflows. And I mean, there's also the possibility to automatically update the the tool test data. Um, yeah, if anyone has any um, opinion on that, then, yeah, it could be nice to hear. And of course, if, if you have questions, then I can answer those as well. That's I think that's fine. I think that's more or less it. Yeah. That's more or less everything I wanted to, um, I wanted to say. Yeah, very nice. Thanks so much. Um, that's really super cool. We've been using it a lot. I mean, it really makes a difference in how up to date the tools can be. So that's really cool. Um, and I mean, for tools and for workflows, this is really awesome work. I mean, that's that was really needed. Um, it really gives us an advantage. That's very nice. Um, yeah, for tool maintainers, I think we have a few code maintainers. Um, so in GitHub, you can put the code maintainer file in a directory. And then whenever something changes, you're being pinged and ask for a review. Um, I mean, in general, it would be awesome to have more tool maintainers. Um, yeah. Um, sorry? Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that there were these two approaches which were proposed. One was to use this code, this code owner's file, and one to um, include the maintainers in the in the shed file. I guess that, that they work. Um, that in terms of the effects, they're basically the same, right? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't use the shed file. We have the um, creator's metadata in the tool XML itself. That mm -hmm. would also be a way, like Planimo could generate the code maintainers based on uh, on this. I mean, we wanted to do more credit. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we want to update all versions. I don't, I don't I see zero cost there, <laughs> but that's that's just me. Um, and yeah, again, uh, I mean, some 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 people didn't agree. So, maybe, so some people thought that if yeah, they if should you mention have, that, um, and we should have an open discussion. Um, the same. I mean, the IWC definitely. I mean, I have zero problem with daily updates. Um, don't think there's a problem. Um, Certainly, I mean, you know, I mean, if people feel very, you know, hands on on their workflows, we can uh, we can work with a code maintainers file then, right? So um, yeah. if there's a code maintainer, then, you know, whoever is updating will first ask for their opinion, but otherwise uh, there's, we should update as, as often as possible. Um, updating test data, I don't like, because usually you have to tailor your test data, you have to trim it, you have to look mm -hmm. at it. Um, we can jump yeah. on, jump in on that. Sure, Marius. Yeah, about the update test data. I think uh, it could be nice to have 
like a Mayaconda bot command, uh, but the Animo bot command. So I, like if a maintainer asks for the update with a comment on the pull request, then it can be done automatically by Animo. Yeah, I think that was what was suggested um, originally in this, in this GitHub issue that I created that it'd be nice to have like a slash command on GitHub or yeah. like you say, a, 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 um, a command with an analogous to Bioconda bot do something, which then um, updates the test data. And then you could also yeah. use it not only for this automatic pull request, but also for um, pull requests which are created by, by human users as, uh, as well. That could be quite handy. Yeah, and I feel like it works in like 2% of the cases, but that's just me. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no harm in having an extra command. And there's a question in the chat. Yeah, about whether um, it works only for Bioconda or for any other Conda channels. So, I mean, um, by default, it works. It, it works in the same way as for, Bi as for Planemo test, that you have these two default um, channels, which are Bioconda and Conda Forge, but just like, um, so, so, I mean, I guess that's the answer to the question that, that by default, it works with, with, with both, but you can also, um, Customize this so, so using the Conda channels flag with Plenemo, you can also specify you, you can specify whatever other um, private Conda channel you want to use. Yeah, no worries. I have a quick question: Is this um, reflected in the UI through the upgrade workflow uh, drop-down option in the workflow editor, or did I misunderstand this possibly? This, so, um, is this, can, so this can we trigger this update process through the UI as admin, or is this more? Uh... So this upgrade workflow option in the UI does exactly the same thing as then this. Plenary okay, it does exactly the same thing. Okay, so it would also, but someone has to be admin on the on the instance to to install these tools or. Mm. So, uh, if you look at these two commands here, so um, for this first command, then it creates a local um, a, a, a throwaway Galaxy instance, so just like for Plenary tool testing. Okay. So in this case, then the user is is admin by default. And All right. For the second and for the second case, then um, it doesn't do any tool installation in, in, in the second case. It just updates to the most recent right. version of the tools which are available. Um, so it. Oh, so the drop the drop down on the right maybe that's why I got confused. So the drop down on the right, if I click on upgrade workflow, it, it triggers this process, right? Yes. So okay. it triggers the process of up, of upgrading all the tools and sub workflow in the workflow to the most recent versions which are available on that particular server. But it all won't right. install anything, obviously. Oh, okay, okay. All right, thank you. That's very cool. So what's next? Do you have any uh, any more ideas that you uh, want to work on? Um, hmm. No, not at the moment. <laughs> um, I think that as far as this um, also update project is concerned, then probably we've taken it as far as it can go. I mean, if anyone disagrees, then please let me know. Um, I, I guess no, I mean, I think this, this is really thought. great. I mean, something else you've done that deserves highlighting is uh, you've also added the plenty more command workflow test in it. Um, I don't know who here has tried to write workflow tests. Um, I mean, it's you can write them by hand, but it's a little cumbersome because you you need to know the test syntax and so on. And uh, Simon added uh, another command where you can just point at an invocation. Um, and it'll produce the test files automatically. Um, do you think there is any value in doing the same thing for tool tests? So I, I know some of us like to write the tests first, but some of us also write the tool first and then produce test data. Do you think that would be worth doing? 
tools yes how how would that work so you mean that you should somehow generate the test from a galaxy job or yeah i mean the same way that you're doing it for the invocation right? it's just a different template the test language is actually the same the difference is just it's xml versus uh yaml json ah right yeah i see, I see, I see what you mean so you mean that you that you first write the tool wrapper but without the test then you takes input data and you run it or you can generate a new test case see i mean for instance if you found a bug um and i mean ideally when you find a bug you want to have a test case that shows how you fixed it so yeah that'd be one way to do it but yes. i don't know if you i mean yeah yeah i'm not sure how useful it is i mean that's kind of what the update test data is um no i mean it doesn't change the test parameters right mm. Yeah, but, but I mean, it takes care of the test data, which is the kind of difficult part, I guess. I mean, I, I'm sure that I've done this when I've written tools that I've written the wrapper and I've written the test right. without the output. Yeah. And then. Um... I mean, I think it would be something nice for new users that are maybe not familiar with the test syntax, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah maybe. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the idea. Is there anything else we should be discussing? Somebody question remarks, latest developments. Like it so yeah maybe uh, we can uh, we can say until uh, yeah the next time in two weeks yeah in two weeks we're going to be discussing the release the 2205 release um the testing team's presenting then so um are we <laughs> that that is what is on the schedule. Uh, we can discuss offline if that's not going to be happening. Uh, I think the last time we talked about it, it didn't have to be just the testing team, but just a release update in general. We can gotcha. sort of crowdsource it. Okay, I can change that on the hub then. It all it's all contingent on uh, when we uh, do the actual testing, and right now there are a few minor things which are holding us up. So once we start, there will be probably uh, a week of testing, give or take, and then there will be another two, three days to prepare the report. So that's why I am not completely 100% sure that we would be able to present the full report. Got you. Okay. We'll have that something. We'll have content. Yeah, we'll have something about the release. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you in two weeks, and we'll talk about the release then. All right. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.